let's take out our Bibles and learn together. Well, we have arrived at one of my favorite passages in all the Bible, and we're going to spend two weeks studying this event. And I say this event, but in actuality, there are two separate miracles that Yeshua is going to perform. And these miracles, although they're separate, they happen to two different women. We're going to find that there's a relationship between them. And we're going to see that this passage gives us a great deal of information to rightly understand God's purpose with Israel. What God is going to do in the last days to bring Israel to faith, does that mean every Jewish person? Why, wish it did. My desire is that everyone would be saved, Jew and Gentile alike. But just desiring something doesn't make it to happen. We know that there is going to be a remnant. What does Messiah say? That the way that leads into the kingdom, we can state it differently, the way that leads into everlasting life is narrow and difficult. And the Bible says few will find it. So it won't be everyone. It is going to be a minority. That special word that we see prophetically is a remnant. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the Gospel of Luke and chapter 8. Now, what happens in this passage, and remember, we're going to spend two weeks completing it. We see that something is introduced. There is a need, and Messiah responds, for he goes to do a miracle. And that miracle is that of resurrection. To give life to the dead. But in the midst of that, there's a type of interruption. There is another woman who is in need of a miracle. And we're going to see that in the midst of this journey to this one man's house, we see that Yeshua, he was touched and very important. What aspect of him was touched? Because this is going to give us great insight. And we're going to see a primary reason why God moves in our life. So as I said, look with me to Luke's gospel, chapter 8, and we're going to begin with verse 40. It says here, and it came about when Yeshua returned, the crowd welcomed him. They were anxious to see him. Now, remember the context? He had gone to the other side. That other side is related to that which is against the will, the purposes of God. And he met there one individual, a man, that was demon-possessed, and there was a legion of demons within him. But Messiah brought about order. Let me ask you a question. Do you want God's order in your life if you trust him believe him respond to him as we'll see in a moment you can experience this wonderful change where you go from living a life that is empty one that is spiritually dead to a life where you are experiencing the fullness that God has for you so again he returns from the other side from that region and the people they are receiving him, the text says, and then look on to the next verse, verse uh, 41, where it says, for they were all expecting him. So they had this expectation that Messiah would return. They were waiting and they received him. Those things are important for God to move in our lives. Now, verse 41, where it says, And behold, a man. Now, this is not just any man. Pay close attention to what is said. Behold, came a man, and this man's name in Hebrew would be Yair. Now, this has to do with someone 
who will be enlightened. Someone who will understand the truth of God. And this one is off to a good start. Why do I say that? Look again at verse 41. For we read here that came a man, his name was Yair, and he being a ruler of the synagogue. So this man was not just anyone, but he was a ruler of the synagogue. That means that he had some knowledge. He understood the word of God. And notice what was going on in his life. There was a tragedy taking place. This is what the scripture is revealing to us. So he's a ruler of a synagogue. And what did he do? And falling at the feet of Yeshua. He beseeched him. This is a word for imploring, for making a sincere and a desperate request. This man is desperate. And who does he turn to? He's a ruler of a synagogue. He's a Jewish man. He knows the word of God and he goes to Yeshua. And what is said? Well, notice he beseeches Yeshua that he would enter into his house. He wants him to come into his house. Why is that? Well, look now at verse 42. Because his only daughter, that is, the only daughter that was to him. Notice something what the scripture says. His only daughter who was 12 years old, now realize everything, everything written in the word of God is revelation. Nothing is there by chance, and we have the number 12. I've shared with you that number 12 relates to Israel. It relates to the kingdom people of God. And this is important because Although we're speaking about a historical event, this historical event, what's going to take place with this 12-year-old girl is going to point to what God's going to bring about among Israel. All of Israel? Again, I wish. But it's only going to be a remnant. So she was 12 years old and she literally was dying. Some will say that she's at the point of death. Death was approaching and what we find here is that death had come. And by the time Yeshua gets there, there's no mistake. He's going to tell us later on next week that she had died. So even though it says it's in the Greek imperfect, she was dying. That means death was present at that point location keep reading notice something else verse verse 40 two at the end but we read here that the crowd that he had departed from the crowd on the way to this man's house and what had happened it says as he was departing as he was going away the crowd The crowd was pressing against him or surrounding him. So you can imagine there's a crisis in this location. A young girl just 12 years old, and she's the daughter, the only daughter of the ruler of the synagogue. And she's at the point of death. Death has come into that house. And now he, this this illustrious, this honorable man, a ruler of the synagogue, What did he do? He came humbly. Why do I say that? He fell, and this is an act of humility, an act of worship. He went to Yeshua. He fell upon his feet, and he beseeched him, come to my house. For my daughter, my only daughter, just 12 years old, is dying. Yeshua responded. He went, and you can imagine, This large multitude of people. 
They knew what was going on. They were part of this great crowd that was now going with Yeshua. And it's emphasized here, look carefully at the end of verse 42, where it says, the crowd, and by the way, that word crowd is literally in the plural. So there were crowds of people. Just think of that. Get that image in your mind. Large crowds of different people, all Jewish, all from the region, but multitudes and multitudes of people. And as they were going, it says that they surrounded they were pressing against him. Verse 43. Now, in verse 43, what we have is a type of interruption. I don't know about you, but when something is important in my life, I don't like to be interrupted. I want to deal with that. It's important. It's vital. And therefore, we see that there was an interruption. But notice how Yair the father of this 12-year-old girl, notice he didn't get involved. He had turned it over to Yeshua, and he was allowing Yeshua, without any involvement, without any uh, criticism, without any suggestions. He gave it to Yeshua, and he left it there. He trusted him. That is faith. But notice what happens, verse 43. And a woman, and this woman was having an issue that is a flow of blood that puts her in the state of being ceremonial unclean. And therefore, because of that, she couldn't be with her family. She couldn't go to the synagogue. She was a type of uh, uh, outcast. Now, maybe no one knew this, but because of the laws of the commandments of God, she couldn't live a normal life. And this was ruining her life, and I'll prove why in a moment. So she had this, this flow, this issue of blood. And notice, she was in this condition, the Bible says, for 12 years. This is the second time that number 12 appears. What's the purpose of that? This ties this young 12-year-old girl with this woman who had the issue of blood. 12 relates to Israel. It ties what we're going to learn next week, these two miracles together. And it's a miracle that gives us a perspective for understanding what God's going to do with Israel among the Jewish people, that remnant, in the last days. So she had this flow of blood for 12 years. And notice who? With doctors. What did she do? She spent, meaning she brought out, she paid, she spent all of her livelihood, all of her resources. But notice something here. She spent all of her livelihood, but no one was able to heal her. No one had, and this word for able is really, no one had the strength to heal her. They couldn't bring a change to her physical condition. Now, this is all going to show us something. And what is that? How great Yeshua is. How great Christ is. Receive him, follow him, obey him. Realize with him all things are possible. Well, keep reading. Look now to verse 44. She apparently witnessed this and apparently recognized who this is that in the middle of these crowds of people is this one Yeshua she had heard about him why do I say that well just keep reading it says and having come behind from the back what did she do she touched and what did she touch well if you just read that and think she touched just the, you know, the fringe of his garment will realize it means something different. Now, I have here what's known as a talit. Now, we can think of it another way as a four-corner garment. And let me give you some homework. Sometime read Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. And it's going to talk about a four-corner garment. And it says, and this is God's law, on each of the corner, you must put what 
It may be in your Bible a fringe. It's called a titsit. And this titsit is made, if you read Numbers 15, verses 37 to 41, these are related to the commandments of God. Now, there's a tradition, and that tradition is still going on today. And that is when someone's sick, they pray for healing. Obviously, we don't want to be sick. We want to be healed. But why do you want to be healed? Just to live your life the way you want to live it? Not a good answer. No, the woman took hold of this. This is what it means when it says the fringe of his garment. It's talking about these. What was she saying? She took hold of this because she was saying, heal me. Why? Because I want to obey your commandments. Now, we're going to be taught a very important message. And that is healing is for obedience. It's not my obedience that causes me to be healed, but if God moves in our life, he moves in order to position us to obey his word. And let me just tell you, if you're not interested in obeying God, you haven't understood the message of the gospel. You haven't understood why God went, went to the cross, why he sent his son, Yeshua, to be crucified, dead, buried, but rose on the last day so that we would be transformed that we would be born again, and that we could obey God. And this is what this woman wanted to do. This is why she took hold of the fringe of his garment and immediately, notice, immediately stood, that means stop, stood the issue, this, this flow of her blood. Verse 45, she had appeared or she had received immediate healing. She came, and we'll see how she came in a moment. I'm not talking about from behind and what she did, but we're going to see that she had faith. Look now at this scripture, verse 45. And Yeshua said, someone has touched me. But all, all were denying. Peter said, also the ones who were with him, master. So, Yeshua, he's belaboring this point. Someone has touched me. And Peter is saying, no one has, has touched you in any unique way. They all were denying that. Peter said, and those who were with him, Master, the crowds, again, in the plural, the crowds have surrounded you. And, and it's a word for maybe jostling. People are going hurriedly. Time is of the essence. And people are going. You bump into each other. You, you, you press against one another. That's what he's saying. The crowds are surrounding you. The people are bumping into you. They're pressing against you. And you say, someone has touched me. Now, he didn't understand what Yeshua was meaning. Look at verse 46. But that means in contrast to what Peter was thinking. Very important conjunction. What does the scripture say? Look at verse 46. But Yeshua said, someone has touched me, for I know, and it's the word power, for I know power has gone out from me. Now, there's a crowd of people. This woman had come up quietly, not wanting anyone to really notice her. And she came and just, just very, very quietly and, and casually, maybe secretly, she touched his garment. And at that moment, power went out and, as the text says, immediately problem solved. Her issue of blood that rendered her ceremonial unclean, that was a key to ruining her life, all of that, Messiah, in a moment, took care of. She knew it. And it also says here, the woman seeing, meaning coming to the conclusion that she was no longer able to conceal, to hide herself. What did she do? She came, and the Bible says, trembling. And she also fell at his feet. An act of submissiveness, an act of humility, an act of recognizing who he truly is. He is, as we saw last week, 
the Son of God. He's the divine Christ. That's what the Scripture is telling us. And on account of which means the reason. On account of the cause, she tells, she tells all the ones that are there, meaning she tells before all the people. Why? For what cause did she touch him? And not only what cause did she touch him, but also the result of it and how he, she was healed immediately. Notice that. How she was healed immediately. Now, there's something wonderful about this text because what we're going to see is that Yeshua, he knows what has happened. He knows all things. And therefore, he is going to address her. And this is important. Why? Because it foreshadows for us what we should know. And that same way, in an instant, what word is, is emphasized here? Immediately. And it comes about immediately because of who he is. He is Messiah. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And what does he do? He brings about God's order. He puts things as they should be. And therefore, this woman, for 12 years, remember 12 relates to Israel, for 12 years she was unclean. No fault to herself necessarily. This was just something that happened. She had this flow of blood. She went to doctors, but... It wasn't a physical problem. It had spiritual connotations, a spiritual connection. And the only one, the only one that can heal her, the only one that can bring order into her life is the Redeemer. And therefore, she, with her faith, and we'll see this in a moment, she was healed. But pay close attention to the vocabulary and what's so, so tragic is that in order to give a translation, they vary the words when it's a particular word in the original language. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Look now to our last verse, verse 48. But he said to her, and again, I'm going to do it in the original order of the words. Some Bibles flip it. I don't know why. But they do. He uses a word, a Greek term, which means to be encouraged. It's a word of comfort. Now, remember, she came quietly, not wanting to call attention to herself. In actuality, she should have been in that crowd because touching her is a transfer of this ceremonial uncleansiness. So she shouldn't be there, but she was. Why? She wanted to be healed. And she knew that he was the solution to her problem. You know what? I'm sure that you have problems in your life. And if you don't, well, praise God, but soon you will have. Everyone encounters problems. And here's the truth. You can't handle it. Only he can. And you need to turn to him in the same way, humbly and with a desire to do his commandments, not for the purpose of saving you, but because it's the right thing to do. Therefore, these problems, they interfere with you doing the right thing. And if you're going to experience healing, then you need to say, God, I want to be healed. I want you to move in my life. I want you to give me power to overcome these things, whether I'm healed or whether you give me the power to overcome. I want you to move in my life because I want to obey you. I want to do your will. I want to put your word into action in my life. That's where it begins. This is the attitude of this woman. And notice what it says. Verse 48. And he said to her, be encouraged. And it's a word of encouragement, but also it is a word of comfort. And that's what God loves to do. He loves to comfort his people. And furthermore, he says, daughter, so be encouraged, be of good cheer, daughter, 
for your faith. And here's what's interesting. For your faith, what does your Bible say? It's a word for being saved. Now, I've shared this with you before. This word, sazo in, in Greek, this word can relate to salvation in the sense of the forgiveness of sins. It can relate to being brought into the kingdom of God. It can relate to, to financial well-being, a financial change in your life. It can relate to, as in this case, being healed from some physical sickness or some spiritual condition. It is a very broad word. And I want you to see the purpose that God moves in our life because so often we forget it. We don't understand how God works and why he works. Look at what it says. He says, your faith, faith is related to truth. You believe the right thing. That's what he's telling her. You have responded to truth. He is the Savior. He is the Lord. He is God who heals. And therefore, he says, your faith has saved you. And that saving has to do with going on. Not just a moment and then here today, gone tomorrow. It's in the perfect. It means it's going to be a, a salvation that goes on. This healing, it's not temporary, but it's ongoing. And what does he say? And here's the key. He says, go in peace. What does that mean? That you're going to have a, a peaceful rest of your life? No, that's not what it means. Peace is related to the fulfillment of God's will. He says it's through truth that God has moved in your life in order that your life now, you can go and live in the will of God. Is that what you want to do? Does that describe you? More than anything else, are you committed to the will of God? That's what true faith is is about that's what it means to be a child of god that's what it means to be a disciple of yeshua so understand god moves for a specific reason and we're going to see next week what's going to happen to that 12 year old girl that yeshua was in the process of going to